Aloha class. Today we're going to talk about cardiac cycle and EKG, which is what you're going to be doing in lab three. So last time we talked about the peripheral circulation. This time we're going to talk about the main, the central circulation or the heart. So in the mammalian heart, we have a completely divided ventricle for a double chamber system. It's a double pump system. So it separates the systemic circulation, which goes to the head and the rest of the body. And then as it passes through the organs, then it meets a resistance and gets a little bit reduced in pressure. But then it comes back to the heart again, where it then gets sent to the lungs for the pulmonary circulation. So it's, there's two circulation circulatory systems going simultaneously. And then the oxygenated blood goes back to the heart to go start all over again and go to the rest of the body again. But it importantly allows to, for a really high pressure system that goes to most of the organs and a slightly lower pressure system going to the lungs. That's important because the systemic pressure is, they're coupled and it's limited by the need to keep the pulmonary pressure low. So here in red is the ventricular pressure and you can see that it swings way from like very zero practically to a very high level. Um, whereas the pulmonary pressure is at, is, um, on average, a bit more moderate, um, but of course at maximum, it's pretty close to the systemic pressure. Um, but the aortic pressure or the systemic is, is kept pretty high constantly, almost constantly. Okay, so blood pressure as we measure it is, what we're usually measuring is arterial pressure as we discussed last time. And we have the systolic pressure, which is arterial pressure during contraction or ventricular contraction or systole. And diastolic pressure, which is the arterial pressure during ventricular relaxation. What we're going to do in lab this week is measure EKGs on ourselves. So as you know, the heart is an excitable tissue. And if you put electrodes across it at good locations, you can actually measure the electrical signal. So what it's going to look like is something kind of like this. And we look for these typical peaks in the EKG, um, characterized by the P wave, which signals atrial depolarization. So the atria are depolarizing and then contracting, followed by the QRS complex, which is ventricular depolarization and it is much bigger um, there's a lot the well the the muscle of the ventricles are, are much larger but importantly there's these big perjunky fibers that um, are coordinating the contraction of the heart and then the t wave which signals ventricular repolarization Sometimes we see an abnormal EKG, and that this is called an ectopic focus, and that's because the pacemaker is sometimes located at the bottom of the ventricle instead of its usual location. It, it's okay. So this is what the cardiac cycle looks like, and of course the EKG or electrocardiogram is up at the top there, and you can see that it's temporally correlated with pressure changes and volume changes, uh, which make perfect sense. So remember diastole is ventricular relaxation and systole is ventricular contraction. So what do you think the parts of the EKG correspond to? So again, the P wave is, um, atrial, is the atrial signal and so that just precedes atrial contraction. Okay, so in the atrial contraction, the valves between the atria and the ventricles are open, and we have ventricular filling. Okay. And then we have the QRS complex, which signals 
um, isometric ventricular contraction. And this is when the ventricle contracts, it closes those valves. And that's when you hear the little lub sound. So this is isometric, so we have pressure building up inside the ventricles, but no volume change or very little volume change, right? Until you get to the point where the, um, the arterial valves open. Then um, you continue to have pressurization, but with the valves open, now the ventricular volume goes down. Okay, so this is ventricular ejection. And then finally, um, there's isometric relaxation, and that allows for the atrial valves to close. And um, this is when the repolarization occurs, the little T wave, and that's when you hear the dub sound. Oops, sorry. So um, again, Systolic pressure is the peak aortic pressure, and diastolic pressure is the minimum aortic pressure. So that can, can correlates with diastole, and the systolic pressure correlates with systole. <laughs> so blood pressure is systolic pressure over diastolic pressure. Okay, so... Um, this is just another view of the pressure and volume changes going on during the cardiac cycle. And so you can see that um, there's filling occurring on the bottom um, with no pressure change until um, the valves close and then you have isometric contraction. So um, you have pressurization first occurring with the valves closed so that it's isometric and then some of the valves start to open, but you have continue, continued pressurization, um, and then you have, so then you have volume changes, because now the ventricle's emptying. So that's the left ventricle. Okay, until the point where you start to have isometric relaxation. Then there's no volume change, but the pressure is dropping way down to start the cycle all over again. And you can see this really great video that I found here on this link. It's a, it's a simulation of a heart. And you can watch its contractile patterns. And then, um, you know, it shows you systole and diastole and what's going on with arterial pressure, ventricular pressure, volume changes, and then also the EKG down here and even the heart sounds. Okay, so you can also, um, you can play it, or you could also uh, step through it like this and look at the different um, time marks within the simulation. So have fun. It's pretty cool. Take care. See you in class.